Approach to a patient with back pain. Let's begin our approach using P3 Maftosa, 3 P's, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital? Here, can you please tell me more about it? Ask about pain questions using Socrates PDA site. Where exactly do you feel the pain most? Onset, how did the pain start? What were you doing when it started? Is it the first time or there were previous episodes? Determine is it sudden or gradual in onset? As sudden onset of back pain is caused by intervertebral disc prolapse or fracture, spinal cord compression, or cauda equina syndrome. Whereas causes of subacute onset back pain includes degenerative, inflammatory, malignant, or metabolic causes. Character, can you please describe the pain for me? Dull pain is caused by degenerative back pain, malignancy, and inflammatory causes, whereas sharp, shooting, electric shock and burning pain is suggestive of nerve root compression. Next, ask about radiation. Does this pain go anywhere else? If the answer is yes, then ask where it goes. Pain radiating to the legs bilaterally can be due to cord compression or cauda equina syndrome. However, sciatic pain radiates down the thigh and leg typically below the knee, whereas thoracic back pain radiates to the anterior chest wall. Associated symptom, stick on your diagnosis. Ask about alarming symptoms or red flags that include history of malignancy, immunosuppression, HIV, age over 50 years, fever, night sweats, weight loss, duration greater than one month, lack of response to analgesia, night pain, thoracic pain, and the presence of Neurological symptoms. Ask specifically about paresthesia and sensory loss in the perineum, limbs, trunk, and abdomen, or any lower limb weakness, as unilateral lower limb weakness may be caused by nerve root compression, whereas cauda equina syndrome or spastic paraparesis of cord compression can cause bilateral lower limb weakness. Also, urinary retention or incontinence may be a manifestation of cord compression or cauda equina syndrome. After excluding the alarming sign, check for the presence of any rheumatological symptoms as well. Ask for any morning stiffness, joint pains, swelling, and deformity, any restrictions in the range of movement of the spine, or any painful eyes, blurring vision, and ask does the light hurts you? Next, ask about symptoms of hypercalcemia suggesting myeloma or disseminated malignancy, abdominal pain, vomiting polyuria, polydipsia and constipation. At this point, ask about mood and psychological stress are independent risk factors for low back pain. Timing, does it from specific timing? Has it happened before? Is the pain constant, or does it come and go? Next, ask about exacerbating factors. Does anything make it worse? As movement, coughing, sneezing, and straining exacerbates pain caused by disc prolapse and cord compression. Well, the Pain that is caused by walking a fixed distance and is relieved by rest is typical of spinal stenosis, also called spinal claudication. Further, ask about relieving factors. Does anything make it better? As sitting or bending forwards relieves the pain of spinal stenosis, whereas pain that is not relieved by lying down suggests malignancy or infection. Ask, have you tried any analgesics? Scale, if I was to give you a scale from 1 to 10, 1 is lowest and 10 is highest. How do you scale the pain? Progression. Has the pain changed over time? Is it the same? Getting better or worse? How is this pain different from previous episodes? As malignancy or ankylosing spondylitis presence is progressive pain. Duration. How long it is present? Anything else? Before the start of questioning about specific diseases that might result in back pain, let's have a quick look at the possible differentials. We can categorize the spectrum of diseases based on age. The age ranging from 15 to 30 years, top possibilities of back pain include herniated disc, trauma, fractures, seronegative arthropathies, ankylosing spondylitis. Whereas, in the person with an age limit of 30 to 50 years, degenerative spinal disease, herniated disc, malignancy of the lung, or breast, or prostate may be a possible option. Moreover, the person beyond 50 years of age, top differentials causing back pain include degenerative, osteoporotic compression fracture, Paget's disease, malignancy, 
myeloma, and lumbar spinal stenosis. Other causes include cauda equina syndrome and spinal strain. At this point, let's have a quick recall of major differentials and a brief overview of their symptoms to narrow down our differentials and help us to make a possible diagnosis. First is cord compression. Ask about the presence of any back pain along with numbness to lower limb up to a certain level. Moreover, history of any cancer may be a strong supportive point for the diagnosis of cord compression. The presence of vertebral tenderness, sensory level, and hyperreflexia should be expected in this patient. Next is epidural abscess. Here, the presence of any back pain along with numbness to the lower limb up to a certain level along with associated fever history is important. Additional supportive evidence includes the presence of vertebral tenderness, sensory level, and hyperreflexia. Another important differential is cauda equina syndrome. This is characterized by bowel and bladder incontinence, erectile dysfunction, and bilateral leg weakness, and saddle area anesthesia. It is a urological emergency. And for diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis, back pain in a person younger than 40 years of age that worse on rest and improves with activity will be an important clue. Reduced chest mobility is also a supportive point for this diagnosis. Additionally, for disc herniation, back pain along with pain or numbness of medial calf, loss of knee reflex and positive straight leg raising test provides additional evidence for this diagnosis. Past complaints, similar complaints, has anything like this has happened to you? For how long? What did you take for it? Is it well controlled? Are you taking any medication? Long-term use of steroids as a risk factor for osteoporosis. Do you have any long-time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long? Is it well controlled? As malignancy like breast, lung, colorectal, renal, thyroid, and prostate cancers metastasize to bone. Tuberculosis or staphylococcal infection these are common causes of bone and joint infection. Osteoporosis predisposes to vertebral fractures. Inquire about risk like early menopause, oophorectomy, and thyrotoxicosis. Ask about hospitalization, saying have you ever been hospitalized? If says yes then ask what for, for example for any procedure like any biopsy. Next step is personal complaints. I'm going to ask you a few personal questions, and whatever you say will be confidential. Smoking. Do you smoke? If say yes, then ask. How many cigarettes do you smoke a day? For how long have you been smoking? Cigarette smoking is a risk factor for osteoporosis. Tell me about your sleep. Do you drink alcohol? If he says occasionally leave it. If says yes, proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? Alcohol consumption is also an important risk factor for osteoporosis. How is your appetite? Recreational drugs. By any chance do you take recreation drugs? If says yes, then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you but what do you do? How do you take it? If injecting, ask, by any chance do you use a new needle all the time? For how long you are doing this? Do you use any other recreational drugs? Weight change. Have you been weighing on the higher side? If yes. Ask about bowel habits. How often do you open your bowels? Have you noticed any change? Sexual history. Are you sexually active? If says no, then ask, have you ever been sexually active? If the patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Are you on any contraception? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? Did you have any sexual relationship there? If the patient is a woman, ask about 4P, period, LMP. When were your last periods? If more than 4 weeks then she might be pregnant. How many days did they last? Are they irregular? Do you get paid? Any bleeding between your periods or after intercourse? Are you on pills? Pregnancy. If she is not active so she is not pregnant, then ask, have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during, or after pregnancy? Pap smear. When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you booked an appointment with GP? Allergy. Family history. For carcinoma history in a family is important. Just ask. I am very sorry to ask but if anyone in your family is diagnosed with a sinister disease, cancer. Ask for osteoporosis, psoriasis, 
and ankylosing spondylitis, as well. Travel history, occupation history What do you do for a living? Ask about the nature of the work, does it involve heavy lifting that might be precipitating back injury? Ask how much these symptoms are affecting your daily living, whether he has had to take time off from work due to pain. Social history, where do you live? Whom do you live with? Inquire about the functional status of the patient, particularly the impact on the activities of daily living such as self-care, cooking, shopping, and driving. Anything else you want to tell me? Then at the end take your time for an impression. Then, turn to the examiner and say based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this. My differentials are this, this and that, and I should have ruled out this and that. Thank you for watching. Stay connected and subscribe to this channel for more interesting medical professional videos. And, good luck with your exam.